Bump five and six, what we call having the chat. The chat is generally, for example, a student continues to misbehave, they're refusing to follow your instructions, or persistently over a period of time they've been doing something wrong, um, sworn a few times, uh, continue to talk to their friends without following your instructions to be on task. They could be off task, for example, because the work is simply too hard or because it's too easy or they just don't know what they're doing. It's quite often a lot of misbehaviour when off task behaviour is caused by students' um, fear of failure. Fear of failure especially in front of their friends. Um, the chat. The chat is generally where we say, okay, well, I've asked Johnny over there to be quiet a few times. He still continues to talk. I'm trying to work with this group of students here. I'm going to have to go over there and have a bit of a yarn with him and get him back on track. Generally, it's private. What that can mean is it's a good idea to drag kids outside. Johnny, follow me, come outside. Or you can sit, crouch down and just have a quiet little word with him. No, it doesn't have to be too loud and, and definitely not embarrassing. We don't want to embarrass people in front of all their friends. People don't respond very well if they're embarrassed. Usually outside is best if you can, but again, if it only takes a couple of minutes for a chat, you don't want to be dragging people outside and, and back in. It can um, distract other students. You may not be allowed to, um, and it can be embarrassing for students to stand up and walk outside in front of everyone. Use silence. Silence is generally, um, and, and lots of people use this in lots of different industries. For example, police. Why did you murder that person? And dead quiet. They'll have a simple three or four word answer, still stay quiet, People hate silence and they'll just continue to talk. Journalists use this a lot as well. So when you're talking to Johnny who keeps talking over there, you've dragged him outside or you're standing next to him, you're having a bit of a chat to him. Johnny, why do you keep mis misbehaving? Well, miss, it's because um, I just, I don't know, I, I didn't get much sleep last night. Instead of replying to that, if you just wait a few more seconds, Johnny will continue and say a few more things and then maybe continue and say a few more things. Use silence, good way to get more information out of a student you can get them talking. Respectful, again, make sure it's positive, make sure it's neutral. You're a facilitator, you're not a disciplinarian. Your job is to manage this process of students making their own decisions and, for, and um, taking on the consequences for their own decisions. Um, and using iMessages, to, um, especially if you've got a good rapport with students. Look, Johnny, um, I feel that you're just ignoring me, using those I words, putting social pressure on students. I just get the feeling, I mean, I feel upset when you ignore me because I'm really trying to help these group of students over here. Um, iMessage is really important. Now, what can the chat involve? How, what does it sort of look like? Let's say, for example, I went over and spoke to Johnny because he kept talking. I'd probably say something like, Look, Johnny, I'm, I've really got to get this done with the rest of these students today. It's really important. There's only half an hour left to go for recess. Do you reckon you can hold on till then? Because otherwise, I mean, uh, what is the consequence going to be? You tell me what the consequence is, Johnny, if you continue to talk. Because I am starting to get a little annoyed now because it's, you know, I'm, I've got other stuff that's really important that I've got to do. Okay, so what's going to happen if you continue to talk? And Johnny will probably say something like, oh, I get sent outside or I spend five minutes with you at recess. And you can say, that's fine. Okay, you've made the decision. If you now decide to continue talking, you're deciding to um, undertake that consequence. Um, and of course, if Johnny does uh, continue to talk, then you're going to have to follow through, um, which we covered in the lower bumps, bump four. You can see how all the bumps sort of interrelate and it can be hard to follow them sequentially. Um, but it is a very good system um, to broadly follow, I suppose, to help you deal with um, the different type of incidents that occur. Um, the chat can also be an informal sort of contract. So you can say things like, look, Johnny, if you're working really well for the next half hour, I'm not going to keep you in at recess, but you've got to work that time off. And of course, you don't want to stay in at recess. You want to go have a coffee because you've been working really hard. But Johnny doesn't know that. And he'll probably work hard for the last 20 minutes of class. He gets to go on time. You get your work done. And there's, there hasn't been a screaming match. There hasn't been a loss of rapport. You haven't um, hurt your relationship with that student. He doesn't walk off thinking, God, I hate that stupid person. Ra rah, rah. Okay. Um, bump five or six, the chat. It's the highest bump that we do in the education support certificate three. The bumps above that, seven and eight, talk about um, getting more senior staff in to come and help you, wider behaviour management policies for whole of class, whole of, whole of year level or even school level, suspensions and things like that. Um, bump five and six.